Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, coronavirus relief could be on the way for those struggling financially. But some local leaders express their frustration and say the needs of millions have been ignored. The next steps being announced later today. New details this morning in the New Year's Eve shooting death of an 18-year-old man. The alleged killer, another teen. Details on the case and the arrests made yesterday. And sweet and savory treats return to Kern County this weekend, like cinnamon rolls, turkey legs, and more. When you can get your hands on your fair food favorites, today is Friday, January 22nd. 2021. Good morning, Kern County. Thanks so much for starting your day with us on this Friday. I'm Alex Fisher along with Nicole Gitsky, and we're getting ready for the weekend, of course, which is always great news. But I think better news right now, Nicole, quite honestly, is the rain that's headed our way. Boy, do we need it. Yeah, I know. Yesterday was gorgeous. We saw 70 degree weather, but we are definitely looking forward to seeing some rain, snow, whatever Mother Nature is going to throw our way. Let's send things over to Kevin now who can give us a look at our forecast. Kevin, good morning. Good morning, Nicole. Yeah, we have a busy morning uh, because we've got some weather on the way and it's going to hang around for a while. It's not going to come in all at once. It'll be kind of in waves. uh, So we'll be explaining all of that throughout the morning. But let's talk about what we're seeing right now. And we are seeing some clouds pushing into the valley. This is uh, the start of system number one. And we're going to start out with these clouds, and then we'll see the increasing chance of some showers as we progress into the afternoon. But in the short term here, we'll just look for some cloud cover. Now, I want to show you future cast, and this is throughout today in heading into the afternoon. And you can see by 1 and 2 o'clock, we see some of these showers try to push in to our area. And this will continue throughout the evening hours as well. They may be spotty. I'm not expecting a lot of rain with this first system. Outside right now, 45 degrees and mostly cloudy. A north-northeast wind at 5 miles per hour. And as we take a look at the hour by hour, expecting mostly cloudy. I'm not going to introduce a chance of showers until the afternoon after 1 o'clock. Again, throughout the morning, I'll be tweaking this forecast as new data comes in. And as we take a look at the mountains right now, you're at 32 degrees under a calm wind. And as we take a look at the forecast, throughout the day. The clouds will be around. Temperatures will be near 50 and we'll also be looking at a chance of showers to roll in this afternoon and into the evening. We've got other storms to talk about as well and some are going to bring a good amount of snow possibly to the Kern County Mountains. That's all coming your way in just a bit. Back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. We have new details this morning on how President Biden plans to help those who are struggling financially during the coronavirus pandemic. Tracy Potts is in Washington with more about the plans that could be announced later today. Hi, Alex. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're expecting two more executive orders from President Biden, focusing on people who need two things, cash and food. The nation waiting for action. Let me be- President Biden offering hope. Help is on the way. And a warning. We're still in a dark winter of this pandemic. It's going to get worse before it gets better. He's predicting half a million COVID deaths by next month. This executive order I'm signing. Rolling out two new orders today to provide economic relief. One expands food stamps and other government assistance, including direct payments to the neediest Americans. It pauses debt payments for veterans and underscores the right to turn down jobs that put a person's health at risk. The second order establishes a $15 minimum wage for federal workers. The White House says he's eager to work with Republicans. They're looking for engagement. They're looking to have a conversation. They're looking to have a dialogue. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But Republicans question the president's priorities. The president can and should refocus his administration on creating good-paying American jobs. And the price tag. We have to get serious about how we're spending taxpayer dollars. We already have more than $27 trillion in federal debt. Biden wants millions vaccinated quickly. Getting 100 million people vaccinated in the first 100 days is quite a reasonable goal. But at least a dozen states say they don't have enough vaccine. And here on Capitol Hill, the Senate's minority leader wants to push President Trump's impeachment trial into February. That could give them more time to deal with Biden's cabinet nominees. Up today, retired General Lloyd Austin. If confirmed, he becomes the nation's first black defense secretary. 
On Capitol Hill, I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. President Biden is making sweeping changes after being sworn into office on Wednesday. And House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says the president is focused on the wrong things. During a news conference yesterday, the Bakersfield Congressman says President Biden is putting the needs of illegal immigrants over Americans. On Wednesday, Biden signed a plan that would create a pathway to citizenship for nearly 11 million undocumented immigrants currently living in the U.S. McCarthy also expressed anger over the president's decision to terminate plans for the Keystone Pipeline. The new administration was more interested in helping illegal immigrants than helping our own citizens. The new administration was more interested in virtue signals to the climate activists and supporting the union workers who were building the Keystone Pipeline. McCarthy also accused the president of ignoring the millions of Americans who are suffering during the coronavirus pandemic. Yesterday, Biden also signed several executive orders regarding COVID-19 testing and vaccines. Meantime, Congressman David Valadeo is also remarking on the president's first day in office. During an interview with 17 News yesterday, Valadeo says he knows there will be some disagreement, but hopes the president will work with Republicans. The congressman also said he hopes both sides of the aisle can work together on issues crucial to the Central Valley, such as oil, agriculture, and water. To watch our full interview with the congressman, just head to our website, KGET.com. Now in your 17 Crime Watch, a 17-year-old boy was arrested yesterday in connection to a deadly New Year's Eve shooting. Police say the teen is a suspect in the shooting death of 18-year-old Emmanuel Achiga. The shooting happened in the 2800 block of Morin Court, but police say Archiga managed to drive himself to Echo Avenue near Wilson Park. There, a woman called for help, but Archiga died of his wounds. Police say the 17-year-old suspect was arrested in Palmdale. His name has not been released because he's a minor. And the Highway Patrol is investigating a crash that killed a motorcyclist yesterday. According to the CHP's traffic incident page, the collision between the motorcycle and a semi-truck happened around 6.45 p.m. at Old River and Millix Roads. It's not clear what caused the crash, but it appears the driver of the semi made a turn into the path of the motorcycle. And Bakersfield Police arrested two people accused of human trafficking earlier this week. Officers took 31-year-old Melton Smith and 22-year-old Aaliyah Wheeler into custody on Tuesday. They face human trafficking charges as well as pimping of a minor, sexual assault of a minor, false imprisonment and conspiracy, according to BPD. Police said the victim, a 17-year-old, has been reunited with family. Kern County Sheriff's Office is investigating after skeletal remains were found in a desert area in Ridgecrest. KCSO said deputies were called to the area near Jack's Ranch Road and West Ridgecrest Boulevard around 12:15 yesterday for a report of skeletal remains found in the area. Detectives were called to the scene and their investigation is ongoing. The coroner is working to determine if the remains are human. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Sheriff's Office at 861-3110 or secret witness at 322-4040. Now today marks 32 days since Orrin and Orson West were reported missing from their California City home. On Monday, a candlelit vigil will be held in honor of the boys. A reward of $100,000 is now offered for anyone who can help investigators find them and bring someone to justice for their disappearance. Cal City Police Chief John Walker says his officers are following up on every tip they receive. The vigil for Orrin and Orson West will be at 6 p.m. Monday at 10717 Aspen Avenue. Candles will be provided for those who show up. And as we hope for a calmer and cooler 2021, the Bakersfield Fire Department released new statistics on just how much they had to deal with over the course of 2020. City Fire says it responded to 574 fires last year. That includes buildings, vehicle, brush fires and more. That breaks down to an average of nearly 48 fires per month. In all, the city says four people were killed, 20 were injured, and more than $15 million in damage was done. The department says it also arrested 63 people on arson charges. Welcome back. United Way of Kern County mails out between 300 to 500 books to children in our community every month. It's known as their book club, and the work is all made possible through the help of volunteers. Yesterday, the Bakersfield Breakfast Rotary stepped up to help in this month's mailing process. BBRC also donated 100 books as part of the program. The books were chosen by members who voted for their top five picks from a list of 100 books provided by United Way.
As a kid, I loved getting a new book all the time. It was so important to me. So being able to give that monthly to children throughout Kern County when we know there's so many families in need right now, especially with COVID happening. Now, United Way says they are always looking for more volunteers to take part in their book club. To learn more, you can visit their website at uwkern.org. And looking ahead to this weekend as the Kern County Fairgrounds will host another fair food drive through When last year's fair was canceled, food vendors set up in the parking lot so people could get their fair food fix. Things like cinnamon rolls, lobster fries, corn dogs, and more. It was so popular that another fair food drive through is taking place today through Sunday and again next weekend from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, go to kerncountyfair.com. And one local family is asking for the community's help as a 14-year-old boy's fight against cancer. Javon Crompton was diagnosed with leukemia in 2019 and is in need of a stem cell transplant. His family is holding a Be the Match registry event. It's happening tomorrow at Kingdom Tax Services from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. To join the registry, potential donors can text Team Chocolate Vaughn to 61474. Potential donors must be between the ages of 18 and 44. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. And welcome back to your 17 Business Watch. And there's an unusually strong personal computer sales going on right now. Chipmaker Intel says PC sales were up 33% during the holiday sales quarter. Intel said strength in PC sales helped it exceed its own expectations. The trend has been strong over the past year as people work or attend school from home and look to upgrade those computers. Well, Americans have mixed feelings on how social media companies are moderating harmful content. Some call it censorship, while others see it as a public safety issue. Liz McLaughlin looks at the issue. Unity is the path forward. As the new administration encourages Americans to come together, political discourse on social media remains divisive. I've definitely seen friends and family arguing, people deleting people, a lot of false information. Misleading messages that can be magnified online. The mob was fed lies. Which can lead to dangerous results. It intensifies anger, it intensifies impulses. Tech companies reacted by clamping down on content, including removing former President Trump from social media platforms and forcing alternative social app Parler offline. I love a good conspiracy theory like saying Sweden is fake, but, you know, some of these other conspiracy theories are truly dangerous. According to a new Harris poll, 37 percent of Americans say they approve of those actions, 28 percent saying the companies have gone too far. I don't think censorship is the answer. But 23% say tech companies aren't doing enough. What we need is for this to be a standard practice year-round and not just after uh, violence or tragedy. Misinformation researchers say by the time harmful content is removed, the damage may already be done. Even for those who initially instinctively don't believe a piece of information, they may gradually be convinced that it might be a fact. Making the fight against falsehoods a high stakes battle. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.